Now, I want to talk to you about uh, your elections. You may have elections going on. Texas, I know, has elections going on right now through May 2nd. Election day is Saturday, May 6th. Um, but this is these are the ones where they get you because they're very organized. And some of these elections, many of them school board elections, they can be won by three votes because seven people have voted. OK, nobody goes out and votes. You need to call your friends and organize your neighborhood. Literally, if you put 10 people in a car, you could be the difference on a winning and losing election in an election like what's happening right now. Um, I want to introduce you to uh, Stephanie Alod. She is and now don't hold this against her. OK, yes. She's a California native, but she got to Texas as soon as she could. Stephanie, welcome to the program. Thank you, Glenn. Yeah. Um, so you moved from California. You moved to Frisco, which is a really nice uh, part of North Texas. And it has great schools. And you got into the schools. And then you started paying attention to what was being said because of COVID. And what happened? Right. Well, the first few years were great. We've been here 10 years. And then I started to notice some things even before COVID, but then after COVID, definitely. And so I went to a school board meeting just about two years ago, actually, and I just did not like what I saw at all. I felt like the parents who had taken time to be there were were very disrespected. In fact, the school board president at the time said, this is our meeting, meaning theirs and not ours. And it just didn't sit right with me. So To make a very long story short, I ended up running for school board last year, and I won. So I have been a school board member um, for about a year now. And you found out, and we have the tape, we're going to play it here in a second. You found out that other members of the school board were meeting without you to try to figure out how to pretty much silence you. Yes, I did find that out recently. And, uh, well, let's, let's play. Do you want to set this audio up? Well, yeah, from what I understand, I can, sure. So, so what happened last fall was that myself and another trustee put an item on the agenda related to bathroom policy. And so that it took a while, and now I know why it took a while. Once you hear what you're about to play, it'll probably make more sense, but It took a while, and I didn't really think that much about the fact that it took a while, even though we have procedures as part of the board in terms of how long things should take before they get on an agenda when trustees request it. But anyways, apparently there was um, some constituents of our community who were angry about the policy, so our three board officers met with them to address their concerns. And um, they were concerned that we had just passed a policy saying, you know, boys use boys' restrooms, girls use girls' restrooms. They were upset about that. And so this this audio was the three board officers um, kind of responding to those concerns. Now listen to this. Go ahead. I am so tired of having, because every time it's on a board meeting, every time it's on an agenda, the entire crowd now can come and speak about how Stop for a second. This this woman is saying, I am so sick and tired of it. Every time we talk about bath- bathrooms, then the entire hate crowd comes in and we have to listen to how much they hate it. Go ahead. I mean, Marvin and Stephanie are going to keep on. But every time, they're going to ruin every meeting. They're going to ruin this every meeting. Yes. And I have mechanisms in place that I can push and I can use our subcommittee structure and they wanted to vote on this in July. Mm-hmm. It's November. That's how long I've been able we to push this out. out. And yeah. so, like, I have mechanisms by which I can do that. And I can also put it on any agenda. They want it on the regular board meetings because it's a show. If they ask for anything transgender policy going yeah. forward, it will be on a special meeting in the middle of the day that no one goes to. And if you, the only way we can combat wow. what they're doing is to make sure our board stays in the majority of good guys. That's all we can do. Because the but state, if they change the state law, they yeah. want yeah. They They will try. That they have never been successful in passing a bathroom policy at the state level. Because we need to be in the audience listening to what their narrative is so that we have a defense mechanism. That is 
incredible. In case you need a recap, some of the things discussed there was we're tired of the people coming to the meetings and wrecking the meetings. And Stephanie and and uh, and her uh, fellow board member, they keep coming and they're going to wreck all of these meetings. Uh, so uh, then the next one says, oh, well, I I can keep it off the agenda. They wanted to do this in July. It's now November. And I have mechanisms that will keep it off the agenda. And the other one says, and if they want to put it on the agenda, we can put it on in the day so nobody comes and uh, we won't have to deal with all of that. Uh, what was the last thing uh, in there? There was oh, so we, much. We have to have uh, we have to make sure that the good guys remain in control of the board. The question is, who are the good guys and who are the bad guys? When you heard this, uh, Stephanie, what did what did you think? I mean, I was shocked. I, I really was because, you know, I understand that there's there's a divide within the board and that, you know, the existing board members didn't didn't want me on it. I, I certainly understand that. That was made very clear in last year's election. But, you know, I, I was surprised that that anyone went to this level to do this. And it was very concerning to me to call, you know, to, to characterize the parents as being a hate crowd. These are parents who came and spent their time and spoke, in most cases, pretty eloquently about their concern about this bathroom practice that the district had had, and quite honestly, is still practicing. So, you know, they're allowed to come and say that, and that doesn't make them a hate crowd. They were concerned. There were fathers coming concerned about their daughters. There were, you know, there was a mom who came who her son had been impacted by this whole issue of having a, a biological girl in the boys restroom and then you know when this mother complained to the school about that they said well your son can use the nurse's restroom if he's uncomfortable and she came and spoke I didn't that's not a hater that's just you know someone who disagrees and it you know one of the things that concerns me the most about this whole environment that we live in especially as it relates to school board elections is if you don't agree with the establishment, then you're, you know, you're a Dangerous. hate crowd yeah. member, right? And, and you're anti-public education. It's like, it's so ridiculous. It's so intellectually dishonest. It's like, we can disagree and that's okay. But this, this name calling and this rhetoric is just, it's escalated in Frisco this year because of the board election. And it's really sad to see. So um, first of all, are there people that you've talked to you're getting some other people like you on that are running now for the board there are two people that i am supporting in this election i, I sort of characterize it as establishment candidates versus independent voices that's how i characterize it mm -hmm. um and so there are um i've supported reed bond and susan kershaw we have two seats up for election this year and i have publicly endorsed and supported them are they running as re this. are they republicans or democrats or independents they are. They're they're conservative. They're, okay, sure. okay. They are. And they've gotten all the endorsements from all the conservative groups and okay. a lot of the Republican politicians. But because they're nonpartisan races, it doesn't have the any kind of party affiliation on yeah, the ballot. Yeah. Right. Um and and how do you are there any I mean, because they're so they hide. They hide. We're open with our view. Look, if you want bathrooms to be shared by you know both sexes or all 99 i'm not the candidate for you they're not open and honest about it so how do you know that you're you're standing with somebody that is good well um you know you just ask questions and i think a lot of these these grassroots organizations um, you know, do the vetting. And so that's what I tell people is go look at their questionnaires, go look at who they're endorsing. And you can see some of that. There's also forums that have been online. Um, in fact, I was interested to find out that the Frisco Chamber of Commerce, when they did their forum, that's kind of the biggest forum that we have here. They asked, you know, do you support getting out of the Texas Association of School Boards or not? Because another district recently did, and I thought, well, that's a that's a question. That's a good one. And people said yes or no, right? Yeah. And so you could see where people fell. The other thing I'll say, just to kind of get back to the video for a quick second, is that 
one of our state representatives um, did request that the TEA, the Texas Education Agency, do an investigation into this to see Good. if there was any kind of wrongdoing. And so it is my understanding that that investigation has occurred. So there's been quite a bit of backlash to it, including from several of our elected officials who've gotten involved and are trying to do something to, to just stop this stuff. So the uh, Texas Association of School Boards, um, you know, we, we know about the school board um, associations nationally uh, and the Texas teachers unions, uh, they were instrumental in killing uh, school choice here in Texas, which is incredible to me. We have so many spineless Republicans. Um, what role do those guys play in school boards and, and uh, races like this? So the Texas Association of School Boards, um, all trustees become a member once they get sworn in, if, if your district is a member of, of that organization. And all districts in Texas, except for one, are, and that, that would be Carroll ISD and Southlake, who recently just voted to get out of the Texas Association mm. of School Boards. So they are in a process of exiting. Good. Um, but basically, they provide training for trustees. They provide legal and, and others as well, employees, things like that. Um, they also provide legal services for districts and insurance services and things like that. But they're on the wrong. You know, I have, they're on the wrong side, are they not? Are they not also I mean, pushing? Go ahead. Yeah, I've seen them push quite a bit of of progressive ideology. Um, I was not a fan of that organization when I was running because I had heard about this concept called Team of Eight. Yeah. And that is basically where you have seven trustees and a superintendent and you're supposed to be a team. And I thought, well, that, that just seemed counterintuitive to me on the face of it because I thought, well, aren't the trustees supposed to be there to, you know, oversee the district? And right. Isn't the superintendent supposed to report to the board? and isn't the board supposed to be seven independent voices trying to make decisions for the community? So the whole team of eight concept, I ran a platform kind of against that. In fact, I think I've specifically said I will not be team of eight. I will be an independent voice. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of my thoughts before I, before I got on. And then, you know, when I got on the board, I had the chance last fall to go to a, a convention that was put on by the Texas Association of School Boards. And they brought in ACLU attorneys to talk to the trustees about some of these controversial issues. And I was shocked. I mean, it's one thing to present both sides of an issue, but I didn't see any Heritage Foundation speakers or you know, <laughs> anything like that. Right. Exactly I, I right. I saw the ACLU. And right. I, was, I was quite honestly horrified because it was, you know, you have to allow pornographic books in libraries. Just make sure they're age appropriate, which meant to me, I guess high school is okay, but maybe some books aren't okay for elementary school. But they basically told us there's no book, you know, that you should take out of the library. And some of these books are so explicit. And then oh, they I also, know. you know, said, you know, boys should be in girls' locker rooms if that's yeah. what they want. And I mean, I heard them say it and I, I couldn't get my mind around the fact that that's what they were doing. And so there's a lot of that stuff that that goes on in the conventions but even just a lot of the rhetoric from you know this organization they basically said that when you you know when you become a trustee you serve a district and not the voters and i thought well that's you know yeah. what the heck is that so, so so i have not been a fan of this organization uh stephanie thank you you are running again already no i am not running you're not running I'm okay not good running. No. yeah 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 i didn't on. think so but um no. yeah I have a three-year term, so okay. I'll be in until 2025 at least. Okay. And But I'm supporting Reed Bond and Susan Kershaw okay. to be independent voices for Frisco ISD. I just wanted to talk to you. Thank you, Stephanie. I just wanted to talk to you for uh, the one reason that these are the elections that count. They will organize in these. The average American doesn't even go. And literally, they can be won by one vote, six votes, you can change everything if you just grab five people, put them in your car, go and go and vote. Do your homework. But if you have these elections going now locally, you've got to vote.